Welcome everybody and welcome to Worlds Apart Words Together where best friends share laughter stories and unbreakable bond. We're thinking to change that intro a little bit but we haven't gotten to it just yet so this is what it is for now. And I'm here with Leah and Leah is in a new place. She is in Connecticut. Yes so welcome back. We have gone through like a month of just moving between the two of us. Honestly, we have yeah. Really gone through about four weeks of moving or packing and moving and then moving and trying to get settled. So it's been a crazy August. Honestly, just August. Like it's been a crazy August. Yeah, I have to agree. Um, it's been a ride. For sure. You know, I am excited because I think for the first time in many, many years, I am just looking forward to fall. Oh, I definitely am. Like, I know you always are, but I never really looked forward to fall. Maybe it was also because that was like the hardest time in the season for swimming. But now obviously that is is done. Um, But I went shopping yesterday. And I already bought some like fall stuff. Nice. And what did it's, you buy? Well, you can see it on the table. It's a oh, cute. It's a vase with fake flowers um, because Those are the real best flowers. Way to go. Honestly, and you see that little green pumpkin over there? Yeah. If you take the lid off, it's a it's a scented candle. Ooh, very nice. Yeah. And then I bought a little ghost um, holding a pumpkin lantern for whenever Halloween gets closer. And you can put a little candle light on top of his head. And then he has a little flame sticking out of his head. Very nice. Are you in a more uh, foliage, so trees, shrubs, things that will change color? So in your new place, do you live around a lot of that? or? Um. Back at home, I had a lot more of that. Oh, okay. Now it's a lot more fields. Um, but there are trees around. So, But I just hope I'm going to make myself just find some spots to go to and see the change of the colors. But yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I, I, wanna, I want it to be a cozy fall this fall. I agree. It's going to be weird because it's just going to be me up here. In Connecticut and as much as I want to go do by myself I kind of feel bad like leaving Hunter out I'm like oh sorry <laughs> the next year but I mean just driving like just driving between here and yeah. campus we like everything's like back road so oh it's driving, so much nicer too yeah so driving just driving between here and campus you like I'll see so much yeah change well uh We'll we'll share some fall pictures on our Instagram whenever it gets like closer to it, because oh, it yeah. was still like eighty five degrees here today. It was oh, disgusting. Not here. not here. Yeah, no, it was very hot. Like I bought all that fall stuff because it was a rainy day, and then today it's like sunny and eighty five, and I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> no, here it has been the most perfect weather. So it has been. Um... Like 24 degrees, so what is that, Ooh, nice. like 70s? 70s in the day. Yeah, like 75 maybe. Mm, lower, it's like 71, 73. And then at night, it's been getting in the 40s to 50s, so sitting That's between so nice. 8 and 12. That's so very nice. I have like the perfect weather right now, and yeah. this is why I moved to Connecticut. <laughs> See, that is like... I used to not like that, but now I'm like, I like having a chill morning mm-hmm. where it's just like, it's nice and cool. And then it kind of warms up a little bit during the day, but not too much where you're sweating your butt off. Yeah, but you can wear time. short sleeves. So basically you can wear summer clothes as long as you have a jacket. Exactly. That's perfect. That's perfect yeah. weather. I, I Or you can comfortably wear leggings and a t-shirt. That's yeah. my, like I... I like I want to get to the point weather. where I can comfortably wear a sweatshirt, like a we're thicker. Not, we're not quite there. 
No, no I want to be in that because I bought so many like cute sweatshirt things that I can wear, but I can't just yet because it's been too warm. Yeah, we probably have another couple weeks. Mm, yeah. Weeks. October, they say, is real fall up here. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, but anyway, that's in the future. And today we are going to talk about something that's more within the present. Um, as we kind of touched on the last like two times is we're kind of shifting our the way that we do this podcast into things that align with our personal lives as well struggles that we face just experiences that we've had and then we try to relate that into this podcast and with how we deal with it to hopefully so you can hopefully take something from that um where last week we talked about um shifting to the autistic perspective like i talked a lot about uh, my work and just how people or how you can change your perspective and maybe be more mindful of how people react or do. And then the episode before that was talking about um, the difference between choosing yourself and being selfish. Um, so if you haven't listened yet, they are very good episodes, I think, um, personally, but I'm also biased because I record them to go back and listen to. And today we also have a very fun topic for you. Yeah, so today we're just going to be touching a little bit on a topic that is probably can go down many rabbit holes, but we're just going to be talking about adjusting to a new place um, since both of us just moved and we're both settling into a new environment. We are just going to touch on, you know, learning kind of cult culture, so to speak, changes in places that we're currently living and also just you know learning how to settle in into like a new routine into our new places and um stuff like that yeah because even though it kind of just happens like you're just moving and you're setting everything up and you're just kind of going with the flow usually um that does not take away that you are into a whole different lifestyle, basically. Exactly. Um, so I think we should first start off with um, how far did you end up moving? So for me, it's not that far. Um, it's <laughs> compared to whatever you did. Um, the U.S. was definitely further for me, but now really out of the home, it's an hour and a half drive, which is still that distance where you have to plan out to see each other, but you can definitely see each other more regularly than just a f like few times um, in a year. But it's not like the distance where it's like at night, hey, let's let's go over and have a drink or a chat. Um, yeah, that's, that's too far for that. Yeah, that's fair. And what I do notice within the Netherlands is that even though it's a super small country, every province, because we have 12 provinces, um, has their own like little culture. I think it's a bit comparable to the different states in the United States, but not as drastic, maybe. That's fair, yeah. But you, on the other hand, you moved a lot further away. I did. So I ended up moving from those that know the U.S. geography. I moved from Missouri, which is pretty much dead central all the way up to Connecticut, which is the east north north east coast of the U.S. Um, it's probably the beginning of the northeast states, so we still yeah. aren't super far north. There's still quite a ways to go, but it is considered a northeastern state. So that is nice. It yeah. was nonstop. It totaled like 18 and a half hour drive from Missouri. I Damn. think it was around 1,200 miles or so. I can't remember exactly off the top of my head, but significantly further away from where I was, there's no going back, even by car drive. Like, you will fly yeah. if you want to get there in any kind of 
reasonable Yeah, and time. it's also that distance where you really have to plan out trips before you can... Yes, yeah, so trips, yes, you will have to plan for flights and rental cars and any sort of trip. The good thing is, is anything in the Northeast, we can drive to. Literally, you name it, we can drive to it. Yeah. If it's in the Northeast. However, a lot of mine and Hunter's family live more central U.S. to southern U.S. So anything revolving family will have to be organized by flights and so on. Yeah. So it is a bit more logistically out of the way. Yeah. Yeah, so different place. Um, when we were kind of discussing this topic to talk about something I mentioned is like, even though, you know, it's the same country and you kind of know what it's like to live on your own. And especially for you, like you've lived on your own for such a long time now. And I was pretty independent in the US, but then I moved back home. And then now I actually became an adult by having to pay my own bills and taking care of groceries and all of that stuff. So even though that's like somewhat similar to what you've done, it's still an entire different environment. You have a different housing situation. You have even maybe different kitchen appliances that you will have to use. So it's like little things that were within your comfort zone are now all of a sudden like out of that comfort zone and it has to become your new comfort zone, which can be a drastic and like major switch for people. Exactly. And I think what we what we mean to say is every time you move, whether it's an hour and a half away or it's essentially cross country, anytime you move and go out on your own, it's going to force some version of self growth. And the best yeah. way to do that is to just learn and put yourself in situations to learn and to ask questions and just keep growing as yourself in this new culture, new experience, new place of living. I would agree. And, you know, it's important to have a support system um, in a way. It doesn't matter if it's a phone call away or a drive away. Um, like Leah and I have been best friends for a while now and we've like probably half of the times that we've or half of the time that we've been really good friends um we've been distant around maybe not like exactly but somewhat it's pretty um, close. it is pretty close yeah we're gonna go definitely into a period where we'll be more apart than actually physically together probably. but we're still you know seeking each other out for some moral support or just some advice or some help. And I think that is a very important thing to have whenever you are taking such a step. So you can even let out a little bit of frustration if you have them or just something good that happens to you when you're going into that new environment. Yeah. And also someone that you could bounce ideas off of because you are in a new learning phase of your life. You may want to be like, Hey, I'm thinking about doing this or that. What do you think? And you can have that conversation more just to continue your brainstorm and be like, okay, this is a good decision for me to make right now. Or maybe yeah. this isn't. And get someone else's opinion on it. Second opinions are always good. Um, even if you don't, like, <laughs> sometimes I ask people for an opinion, even though I know really my own opinion, but it's like, I just want to hear other people's opinion. <laughs> yeah, um, but you know, it's good to have that support system, but it can be scary, especially when you're moving to a place where you don't know anyone. Um, you have to kind of get out there and make new friends, meet new people. And that is very scary all the time. But, you know, I think every place that you go to and every decision that you make by going to a place like that um, will bring its own circle or group of people that you can trust in a way or where you know okay for this person I can go to if I need um, someone to have dinner with or this person I can go to when I have an issue with this 
Like you had know what person to go to for what. Exactly. And I think it's important because you are in a situation, especially you and I, we moved to a place where we didn't know anyone. We didn't have anyone right down the street, across the street, whatever. All of our support system is quite far away. You have to, since you're the one that moved, you have to go into a place outside your comfort zone to start forming those relationships. And I know we've talked about it before, but it's so important, whether it's at your new job or your local gym or at wherever you frequently go or whatever situations that you're in, that you need to go outside that comfort zone to initiate any sort of relationship. You can't rely and wait on those people to just put the effort in to get to know you and to accept you and to get along with you and all of that like you actually need to be the one to take that step and introduce yourself and explain a little bit about your situation and just try to start some casual conversation so that you can get to know other people because you can't do it all on your own. And the sooner that you feel comfortable around your new set of people, the better. Yeah. And, you know, you said you have to take that first step. And I totally agree with that. However, I do also think that sometimes other people will take that first step. And then it's up to you whether you go with it or not. Because That's also true, yeah. we could also go into that defense mechanism of like, no, I don't want to talk to anyone. I don't know anyone here, man. It's scary. Or you can have an open mindset, which is also something we've talked about before, where maybe like, oh, this might be a good person to hang out with. And maybe they turn out to be a great person and maybe they won't, but at least you try. Yeah, it's all about trying and it's all about taking that step, whether you do it initially or you're following up but to put the effort in to start building those relationships to start understanding the culture around you kind of like getting used to your new current kind of like life because i know for me moving to connecticut is completely different than way i was living in missouri yeah and just to give some examples Not only is it far away, but Missouri, you could go two blocks down the road and you have a shopping center, whether it's like a small one or like a large one, it's going to have gas stations, um, grocery stores, coffee shops, uh, restaurants. It's going to have pretty much everything you want, like everything you want. And it's a mini, like I came from basically a mini city. Not as big as New York, LA, anything like that, but I came from the city. And moving to Connecticut, it is very much not (laughs) city-like. The closest, I have to drive 30 minutes to the closest major hub of stores. So you better make sure that your grocery list is like, tip top in order yeah there is no unless you want to go to a gas station which is still like five miles down the road yeah but you're not gonna do groceries there yeah well if you forget something that's gonna be your kind of best bet i guess um but yeah the closest thing i or dollar general so dollar general up here is your go-to in case you messed up yeah your list or if you forgot something but otherwise for me it's 30 minutes to the like closest and i'm not even talking just grocery stores i'm talking target any place you want to buy clothes shoes um toiletries anything like that if 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 you're used to a walmart a target if you're used to these like more major common places, you're not going to get that. Like I have to drive 30 minutes for that. And that's a huge adjustment. That's insane. Yeah. To I mean, in this town, there's only one grocery store. Yeah. And I was used to having at least like three in my town. And this yeah. town is only one. 
Yeah. So and it's it, like it's it, very awkward. It is also, very it's something you have to get used to. It's again, it's that kind of culture shift. A lot of things agriculture yeah. where I am is huge, so there's not. Because that's what people I feel like think is like you can only really switch cultures when you go to different countries, but it's not true at all. Because I think Connecticut has a very different culture and a different lifestyle than Missouri has. And the place where I live has a very different culture and very different way of doing things than where I was from home. So it's like, even if it's only an hour and a half away in such a small country as the Netherlands, it's still so different than um, what I'm used to. Yeah, and I like you said, your provinces are kind of like our states, and there's a lot of culture shift in the U.S. based on state and region of state of the United States. And you're exactly right. You, a lot of people in the U.S. have not even traveled their own country, let alone out of the country. And for different reasons, like that could have been, you know, financial or whatever it could be. Or just no need to. Exactly. But that doesn't mean that they couldn't travel their own country and you get so much of that cultural shifts in yeah. the own country. Yeah. So like for me, I always had this stereotypical perception that people in the Northeast are like rude. They are blunt, kind of short or high strung, short tempered, rude people. Yeah. And we came I came to Connecticut and maybe in the cities it's different. Like New York City, other places like that. Maybe the cities are different. But from my kind of experience so far, they have been super friendly and super nice and helpful so it's kind of weird to see also how your perception of something ha- changes because now you're actually experiencing that yeah. area yeah and that is something that we kind of touched on last week of perspectives and stereotypes and that open mindset again um there's something i think i want to share and that is that it is okay to feel overwhelmed with little things i have a very great example for that michael and i got in a bit of a discussion it wasn't really a a little bit of an argument and i have to say my hormones were also off the charge charts yeah off the charts i guess that's a good way to say it but i am used at home to have bread for lunch Bread is simple, it's fast, you come home, take a slice of bread, put some egg on it, put some cheese on it, whatever you want, and you eat it. It's done within five minutes. Michael's used to have this whole like meal for lunch. Chicken, rice, and whatever it is. He eats a lot of food. So it was a Saturday or Sunday, and we come back... Um. I came back from a run and I was like, okay, I will not eat just yet because we're just going to do some groceries and then we'll have lunch. But in my perspective, it was like lunch will be done within five minutes. But we come back and it took him like 40 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes from the time we got back to unpack the groceries and get that rice and chicken ready. And I got kind of just annoyed and upset because I was like, I am sorry I feel this way, but I just, I'm not used to having to wait like 40 minutes for a lunch and then having to, you know, wait for that long. So we kind of got a little bit of an argument and he was like, well, what baffles me is that that is a culture shock to you, but I literally moved to a new whole country. So we got in an argument about that because I was like, well, that was your choice. (laughs) <laughs> well, not you only chose that, he hasn't, a, he hasn't changed anything. It's not like he's having a small lunch. So he's keeping his same cultural mindset, just in a new right. country. So in he a new hasn't country. changed anything. No, and I haven't changed my lunch because I'm like, I don't need a whole plate of rice and chicken for lunch. I'm okay with a slice of bread and two eggs on it. 
Um, and I just told him like, it, it is an adjustment for me because also lunch is like usually a euro or two, but like a whole meal is probably like four euros. So then if you do that every day, it's still like 12 euros a week that you spend more than you would usually spend anyway. Um, so we got in a little bit of an argument of that. Um, and I realized like, yeah, it is something really small, but it is something that is significantly different than what I'm used to. And that's what I think I'm trying to say with getting overwhelmed. It's like, it doesn't matter how small it is. Don't let anyone like invalidate your feelings. Um, because that's what I felt like when Michael was saying that and we talked about it and we eventually like understood each other. But, um, I felt like my feelings of that situation were just being invalidated. Um, even though it was like something super small. And I think that is important to understand that when you go into a new environment, new situation, new culture, whatever you want to call it, you can get overwhelmed and you can get just stimulated by those little things because you notice that it's something completely different than what you're used to. And that's okay. Yeah, for sure. It's like, it's something simple as my grocery stores are further away. Yeah. Like to me, it's not really a big deal. It shouldn't be a big deal. Well, let me tell you my first week here, it was a big deal. <laughs> I had no food in the house and I couldn't just go to the store. I had to no. run around getting my apartment set up, you know, getting paperwork done, starting my first week, then up and go trip on the weekend to my brother's wedding and then come back and I still have no groceries. And I have to plan for a hour round trip. Something insignificant yeah. is quite a culture change. Like it doesn't matter, like you said, how small it is or how minor it is or how how little it may seem. Yeah. It, it can make a big impact on how you no normally do things. And that's going to cause you to get a little bit of overwhelm, a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of stress. And just recognize that and take a deep breath, step back and see how you can attack this new adjustment from a different way. Yeah. And I think you said that very, very well. And, you know, every change in life is going to be a change and it's going to take some resilience to get used to it. But I think if you keep open-minded and you try to figure out where your feelings are coming from, because I think that's a very important thing. It's like, okay, I'm feeling this certain way, but like what in my life is different now than before that maybe makes me feel this way. And if you can understand where the feeling is coming from, you're also better able to process them and move on with them. Exactly. And it's going to take time. Remember to always give yourself time for the adjustment. Your time, yeah. it's not going to happen overnight. It may not happen in a week. It may not happen in a month. Give yourself the time to make those adjustments. Try That's not a very to... important thing too, yeah. Exactly. Like Try not to put all this pressure on you to get it right the first time. Guess what? You're not going to get it right the first time. It no. might take you a few times. And just recognize that and realize that. And like I said, be patient with yourself, be patient with others, and you'll eventually adjust. Eventually. And if you don't, it might not be the place for you to be. Honestly. But yeah. With that, I think we kind of want to wrap it up today. If you take anything from our podcast, please let us know. We are more than happy to hear what you guys think of the content that we're putting out. If you have some ideas or topics that you would like us to cover, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, we are pretty open to talk about anything that you might want some insights on um, and make sure to... Check our Instagram, TikTok for some sneak peeks and fun content Some sometimes. <laughs> we try to stay updated, but it's not always that easy with the lives that we have. We do our but, best. Yeah, we do our best. So with that, um, 
we just want to thank you for joining us as we offer a glimpse into the world of true friendship where even though worlds may seem apart, the connection remains strong. Thank you very much and see you guys next week.